What's up guys, Ruppy here, and welcome to week 7 of the UMPL. Last week my Columbus Swoo... Well... I don't think words really are needed at this point because you know the story by now. Gyarados comes in, Gyarados sets up, Gyarados sweeps, and I feel bad for doing it to someone else. I mean, I know that's kind of what Gyarados is kind of designed for, and it's been doing it pretty well all season, but... I, I think Gyarados... Actually, let me double check real quick. Is it the kill leader for the Narana division? Not exactly at the moment. It's kind of in a fight with uh, Hopeless of Spectre and Dapper's Palafin, actually, over that regard. But Gyarados is up there in terms of uh, leading the league in kills, which is... Stunning to me. But, that does not change the fact that we are currently 5-1 with a plus 12 differential. We have a pretty solid grip for the most part on second place at this point. With three weeks left in the season, I wouldn't quite say we're a confirmed lock for playoffs yet. But, unless I lose out in disastrous fashion, I think it's pretty safe to say we've got a really solid chance of making playoffs this time around, and we will see what happens from there. So, can't quite afford to take my foot off the gas pedal yet, but we're getting to the point where I should probably start keeping playoffs in the back of my mind for some of these matchups. And this week's game is a perfect example, as we take on Backs to the Future, coached by Incog. Incog, I gotta say, man, that is an absolutely brilliant name. Oh, I... Incog has is someone I've sort of known for quite some time now. He is he's a he's been a longtime Jenner for one of the other leagues I've been in, the League of Extraordinary Trainers. He's a really good guy, really solid battler too. I actually played him last season in the League of Extraordinary Trainers. Uh, this should be a good matchup, especially since he has a fairly scary team. Do not let his record fool you. He did end up. He is actually a one of the replacement coaches that came in and took over for one for uh, a team that dropped. But he's he's got a scary team, and if I'm not careful, this team could, in fact, tear me apart. Let's actually leave our locker room behind as my team just kind of chills and gets ready for the game. Uh, there's one mod in particular you probably have taken note of that is here with me this week, but I will address that shortly as we flip on over to the team builder. And let's go ahead and talk about Incog's team and what I'm up against. It'll be appearing off to the right. The roster is as follows. Excadrill, Latios, Tyranitar, Greninja, Iron Hands, Monkey Dory, Whimsicott, Delphox, Phalanx, Swalot, and Vigoroth. His Terra Captains are Monkey Dory, which can terrestrialize into a Psychic, Fighting, or, or Fairy type. A Phalanx, who can terrestrialize into a Fighting, Ghost, or Steel type. And a Vigoroth, which can terrestrialize into a normal fire or the stellar Terra type. So, couple things right off the bat with this team. He's got a lot of fast things. He act he actually and he also actually kind of has a pretty clear divide between his de facto special attackers and his de facto physical attackers. His special attackers are pretty much what composes all his fast stuff, his above base 100. All his physical stuff is below base 100. That's not to say that can't be fixed with a Choice Scarf, or in the case of Excadrill, Sand Rush, because he does have T-Tar to set up Sand. So that is a scary thought I always need to keep in the back of my head. Because Sand Rush Excadrill could very easily turn the tables on me if I'm, if I'm not careful. I think I've got a lot of things with me this week that can handle Excadrill, but again... One wrong move, and that is the end of that. I could be staring down an Excadrill sweep, so I do need to be careful. T-Tar itself is actually kind of a problem, depending on what set it runs. I think I've got options that cover just about everything, but obviously I won't know exactly what T-Tar is doing until it actually comes in. If it's just a sand setter, if it's maybe not sand, if he doesn't bring that this week for whatever reason. His special attackers are a definite problem. Greninja, I have to be worried of whether that thing is Protean or uh, Battle Bond. Water Shuriken is a definite problem for a couple things on my team. Whimsicott is... It's fast, it is incredibly annoying, Grass Fairy type. Latios, if I let that thing get out of control, it, it could spell disaster. Uh, Monkey Dory being one of his Terra Captains is a potential problem as well. He's He's got some things on here that, if I'm not careful, 
basically could be a huge threat if I let them. So I need to basically... I think my key to win this week is to keep up the pressure and try to keep him on the back foot for the most part. So let's talk about how I plan on doing that, shall we? And it begins with Iron Valiant, Lumity. Best couple's fusion form is back. And I am not running Scarf for, for a change. I know, I finally broke away from the Scarf mold. Still running a mixed attacking set, but honestly, even the mixed attacking set, I can get a lot of variety out of what I can run. And this week is no exception. This week, this set might seem familiar to a lot of you, and I am going to be up front. This is pretty much very similar in all but one regard, really, to the Valiant set that uh, the uh, Beneral for Playmore brought to his game this past week for, for SPL. I couldn't deny how much it worked, and honestly, Incog's team is similar enough to Kyle's team that the set kind of works pretty well here, too. The only real change I made is that I swapped out Thunderbolt for Knockoff, because honestly, really the only thing on his team that wouldn't appreciate a Thunderbolt is Greninja, and that thing is already destroyed by pretty much everything else that Viant has to offer this week. And Knockoff allows me to way to hit uh, Monkey Dory and Delphox on their weaker physical sides, at least in terms of Monkey, Monkey Dory, depending on what he tears into. If it doesn't tear or just goes Terra Psychic, I have a means of hitting it and potentially getting rid of it. If he tears into something else, for Terra Fighting, I've got Moonblast. For Terra Fairy, I've got other options. <laughs> but Lumini can definitely put in some work this week. It threatens a lot of this team. I'm running the Expert Bell just for the extra power without the drawback of Life Orb. I, d I did debate Choice Scarf, but to be honest, Excadrill outruns me no matter what, and a Scarf Whimsicott to potential Speed Tide, that could be a problem. Scarf Greninja, depending on the set it runs, that could be a problem as well. I would rather just go for something that I know is going to hit hard, and pretty much threatens a vast majority of this team with its mere presence alone, because quite frankly... Inkog has a pretty bad fairy weakness, and I do plan on exploiting that. There is also the fact that I am running Vacuum Wave. I am finally bringing some priority on Valiant, because this, even despite the uh, special defense boost from Sand that Extra Drill would get, Vacuum Wave still severely threatens it, and if Sand is not up, then I just close combat it into Oblivion. Close combat, of course, even though I'm a more specially uh, offensive set. Close combat threatens T-Tar. There's a lot about Valiant, again, that just threatens everything. Next up, I know it caught your eye when it was roaming around uh, my locker room, so let's talk about this, shall we? Yes, I am finally, at long last, bringing my other Terra Captain, Chimeco, who is going to be nicknamed Fortune, because wind chimes are, well, they are, in many cultures, they are considered a symbol of good luck, happiness, it, it feels like it fits. And believe it or not, Chimeco actually has an extremely good matchup in the Incogs team that I am hoping to, that, well, I'm hoping Fortune actually does put in the work this week now that I'm finally bringing off the bench. So now I can say I have brought every mod on my roster at least once this season. I've got Leftovers, I've got Levitate, I am running a purely bulky set, more so physical, because I can, I, his special attackers aren't the biggest threat in the world to Chimeco, but... I mean, the, the set is kind of self-explanatory. Cosmic power to boost my defenses to make this thing nigh impossible to crack. I've got store power to take advantage of those boosts, recover to heal up. I'm running Terra Electric, and I'm not, run I'm not running Charge Beam, I'm running Draining Kiss instead. The Draining Kiss is there mostly to cover the things that store power is not hitting very hard, because those things, Draining Kiss for the most part... Kind of takes care of them, even without any sort of uh, special attack investment or special attack boosts. Plus, it gives me a backup healing option on the off chance that I either, one, run out of recovers, or two, have had my leftovers knocked off. Or on the off chance that I get tricked something and I lose my leftovers that way. With Terra Electric plus Levitate, Chimeco is pretty much, well, it has no weaknesses. Which, believe it or not, actually allows this thing to... Virtually hardwall Excadrill, which the idea of one of the biggest threats on his team being walled by a Chimeco 
it it amuses me in an odd way. But Chimeco really can pull this off. If I get a couple boosts up, it is free to basically run right through his team. Will it happen? I guess time will tell. But it is good to finally bring Chimeco, and I think I'm going to have a lot of fun actually getting to uh, take it for a spin this week. One mod who is definitely excited to get back in the driver's seat is Warforks the Scizor. And I am going back to the choice band well for this one. Bull Punch, U-Turn, Close Combat, and Knockoff is the set. As per usual, I've got Technician, Max Attack. I am, I do have, I basically forewent speed in favor of Bulk because, quite honestly, the vast majority of his team is outrunning Scissor anyway, so I didn't see much point in investing in speed. This does mean I do leave myself at the potential mercy of a uh, T-Tar. More so a special one if it's actually got some investment to it, because a potential flamethrower could actually catch me off guard and take out Scissor. I think I've got some ways to handle it though, but I do need to keep that in the back of my mind depending on how he plays T-Tar. If it's just more of a rock setter or just straight up bulky set, then I should be able to outrun it even with no speed investment. And these four moves are pretty much all I really need to rip things apart. One of my bigger concerns is a lot of his special attackers, but Scissor kind of solves that issue. Whimsicott really cannot touch Scissor. Latios has to be careful because I can tank hits from it, even with minimal uh, special investment because of how much HP bulk I'm how much HP I'm running. I've got the. 333 uh, HP investment this week. And I could very easily just rip that thing apart with a U-turn or just blow it away with a close combat. Or, not close combat, knockoff. Uh, Monkey Dory doesn't really have anything that can hit Scissor either. And Scissor, for the most part, kind of has ways to cover all of its Terra types, barring fighting. But even a Terra fighting set doesn't want to take a hit from this thing. Uh, Delphox, I certainly have to be careful of as well because it does outrun. But, Scissor puts in so much work for this game, and <laughs> I don't think Incog has the defenses to really be able to take hits from it, so we will see how that plays out. Speaking of things Incog has a problem with, let's discuss Arctic the Mammoth Swine. Yup, Chinese AV Mammo is back. I did tweak the EVs a bit. Because of one particular move I'm running, I did take a bit of attack away and invest it into speed. And I do have a reason for it. Because AV Mammo actually is a, is a pretty big problem for his team. Because of the hits it can eat from his special attackers, which you would think would be the bigger threat to Mammo. Ice Go Crash, Ice Shard, and Earthquake threaten everything. And I do mean everything, because his team has a very nasty ground weakness. And the few things he has that resist or are immune to it cannot take ice attacks. And then there's Trailblaze. Grass type attack, boosts my speed whenever I land a hit with it. I have actually invested so that I believe at plus, let me double check this. I'm pretty sure, now I remember what I benchmarked for. Sorry about that, it's been a bit since I've built this team and I'm trying to get my bearings because it's it's been a hectic week. But with a Trailblaze, Mammoth Swine at plus one, even with an adamant nature, guaranteed outruns Delphox. Delphox is what I benchmarked for because Monkey Dory I can take hits from, then that thing does not want to take an Earthquake. Uh, Latios and Whimscott do not want to take Ice Attacks at all. Greninja, yeah, will outspeed, but if it's not a spec set, I can take a hit from it with this, with a, with this Assault Vest spread. So really, Trailblaze outrun the vast majority of his team, and then Mammo becomes a colossal threat that is going to be very difficult for him to take down. He would primarily probably have to rely on getting the sand up and getting extra drill in to threaten me with an iron head at that, at that point. And assuming I'm at full health, I can actually take an iron head from it and then destroy it with an earthquake as long as I, ha I don't flinch. But that does not change the fact that Mammo is the big threat it was basically built to be. Next up, Willow the Chestnut is returning, and Willow finally gets to uh, join her fellow uh, Hex Squad friends, Loose and Amity, aka Lumity, in combat for once. Did not happen last week because I did not bring Valiant. This week is an entirely different story. I got the max physical bulk. 
I've got the HP investment. I've got a bit of Spadef investment as well. Uh, Body Press, Knockoff, Poison Jab, and Spikes is the set. Willow is basically, uh, once again, my preferred Spike setter in this game because he's being Quillfish actually kind of has some problems with uh, with 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 his uh, sand offense. I mean, it, it does good with everything else, but that gets back to a point I made about keeping playoffs in the back of my head. There are so many different potential builds I could have brought to this game, so many different mods I had built before I settled on the team I'm bringing, which is the one I'm going over right now. So, I do have options on the off chance that Incog makes playoffs and we cross paths again, so I can very easily flip some things around and go from there. But, while Willow may not be the best at handling the fast special attackers, she actually handles the physical half of this team incredibly well. Uh, but with Body Press, I am severely threatening a lot of these things. T-Tar doesn't want to take it, Extra Drill doesn't want to take it, and those things... Well, barring a potential special T-Tar, but depending on the investment, I can take hits from it. They, they don't want to be taking Body Presses. Knockoff deals with a potential Eviolite Vigoroth and opens that thing up for Body Press. With Spikes up. Excadrill is his only form of hazard removal, so I can potentially get some Spikes up and they will potentially stay that way, depending on if Drill actually brings Rapid Spin or not. Poison Jab is a little bit of interesting tech I wanted to try. Because, unless he's running Specs Whimsicott, and is locked into Moonblast, from full health, I can actually take a Moonblast from Whimsicott with this investment, and then immediately rip it apart with Poison Jab, which would get rid of one of the bigger issues on his team. Because Whimsicott's Prankster shenanigans are a, potent, are a possible problem I do need to keep note of. So, eh, that's a fun little thing I wanted to try. And last but not least is probably the Mon who is the epitome of me constantly shuffling things around to try different things and keep keeping uh, playoff builds in the back of my mind. That being our, our uh, good old MVP, Wrath the Gyarados. Yes, it's a bulky DD set, which has kind of been Gyarados' bread and butter. No one has really been able to stop it yet this season, for the most part. Actually, I think Arts came the closest, but... I had Scissor and Iron Valiant for that game, so it kind of evened out, I guess. I'm not really expecting Gyarados to actually pull off the sweep this week, but the possibility is there. I'm running Terra Ground. I've got Moxie just because I don't want to give Defiant to or a Defiant boost to Phalanx. And with Moxie boost, Gyarados has the potential to snowball very quickly. Waterfall, Earthquake, Ice Fang, and Dragon Dance is the set I'm running. The 128 speed EVs with a Jolly Nature guarantee that at plus one I will outrun his entire team barring any Scarfers. Terra Ground may seem like a weird option in the face of Greninja and Whimsicott, but it does boost the power of Earthquakes and it do that does allow me to threaten a lot of things, namely T-Tar and Exadrill because I'm not weak to their rock attacks at that point. I am aware that opens me up to Exadrill's Earthquake, but I don't think that thing really wants to be staring down Gyarados period for the most part. Uh, finally bringing Waterfall back, because, just along with Earthquake, I did mention his, uh, glaring ground weakness, and this Gar Gyarados is kind of built to exploit that. I could have gone Terra Flying and Terra Blast, because that, th that also rips through this team for the things that don't want to take Earthquakes. But, again, keeping potential playoff options in the back of my mind. Ice Fang does a well enough job in dealing with Whimsicott and Latios, which is what they're really here for. So, that is the team as we go ahead and flip back over to the locker room. There's a lot to like about this team, and I'm really liking how it all came together. I'm actually really excited to get to finally try Chimeco out and see uh, how well I can make it work. Will we pull it off? Will we extend our winning ways to a 6-1 record? Well, I guess we'll find out when it's battle time. All right, it is battle time. Let's see what I am up against. What has Incog thrown my way this time? Iron Hands, Whimsicott, Drill and T-Tar, Greninja, and Latios. So, none of his Terra Captains came. A little surprised by that, but I'm not going to argue with it. 
Uh, no. Delphox either. Interesting. Okay. So. Looking at this team, a T Tar lead wouldn't surprise me. A Wim's Got lead wouldn't surprise me either. Honestly, looking over this team, I'm really tempted to just lead Warforged because in the most scenario. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Because in most scenarios, I can just get a banded U turn right on out. See how he wants to play this. Yeah, we're gonna leave Warforged. Bit of an aggressive start, but I think it actually works in this game. Alright. Good luck have fun, Incog. Nice to get to battle you again. And let's see if your sand shenanigans are enough to stop the roll that my team has been on. So he is going to lead with the T-Tar. Which I am all for that. So the sand is going to go up. Uh, that is of no surprise to me. If... So if he's a more offensive special set, he outruns me. Depending on how much speed investment he's running. In most scenarios though, I can just U-turn out for big damage. And I am willing to do that. See how, I, see how he wants to play this, what he brought. He does outrun me, he does a flamethrower, and he does kill Warforged right out of the gate. Okay. So not the start I want, especially since losing Warforged does kind of open me up pretty badly to Whimsicott. But that was the gamble I decided to make turn one. And... I will live with that. Regardless, though, if he does have some speed investment, I could go into Mammo right now. Get a, tr get a Trailblaze off and potentially threaten that way. Yeah, I'm liking that play, honestly, because I can take a Flamethrower because of Avian Thick Fat. If he, if he knocks off my my AV, that is semi-fine. I'm going to go ahead and trailblaze, get a speed boost. And we're going to start getting a little aggressive with this, see how he wants to play this. If he wants to switch out, he is perfectly free to do so. I wouldn't be surprised if he does, predicting like a more offensive earthquake or something. That is very much a play he could make. But... Arctic is in. And... Protect to scout. Interesting. I'm just gonna go for Trailblaze again, because I really have little reason not to. Because I can just get a speed boost out of it regardless. If he wants to go into Drill, I... I mean, unless he's Life Orb with Iron Head, I might not be able to take it then. But... I mean, does he predict me to go Trailblaze again is the question. And that is going to be... The Whimsicott. Which I am fine with. I will hit it with... I will pop it with a Trailblaze. Get a plus one speed boost. This thing is buffeted by the sandstorm. So, let's see here. I'm AV, so if you're specs, I can take an energy ball. And just destroy it with an ice cold crash, so I am perfect. He's gonna encore me into Trailblaze. Encore Whimsicott was a concern in the back of my mind, and having not having Scissor anymore does kind of create a problem with that. So, seeing that... Hmm... 
Hmm. I'm content to go into Wrath, actually, because Arctic still being at full health with the AV is still good for me. I can just potentially set up later. So, Wrath is out now as he Moonblast, which... That... It was a crit. Sandstorm's is... Okay, that confirms to me he's not Smooth Rock on T-Tar, so there is that at least. And I'm just gonna go straight for an Ice Fang on you. Leech Seed, you're one of these sets. Well, that's kind of annoying. And that kind of balances that out, I suppose? Oh dear, I... I am sorry for that, Incog. I... Mm. I mean, this thing can still thaw out. And I don't like being leech seated. One thing I think I'm willing to do is go back into Arctic now. As he just switches. That is fine. That is going to be the Iron Hands. Yep. So now comes the question of what are you? Because I do not have the offense... A close combat definitely takes me out. Is the one problem here. Your Assault Vest... Hmm... Maybe I should have just like left Gyarados in and gone for a Dragon Dance. That feels like a bit of a wasted opportunity in hindsight now. I'm gonna go into Willow. I'm gonna go, go into Willow and see what you are. We can still salvage this. He just goes for Drain Punch. And that did a fair amount. I'm at 26 after Leftovers. I'm willing to knock off to, see, to get rid of whatever item you've got. See exactly what you're playing with. If I get rid of an Assault Vest, that makes my life significantly easier in regards to Valiant dealing with you. And to some degree, Chime Echo as well. If you switch, then I definitely get rid of something else's item, which would be, benefic which would be beneficial. He's going to withdraw. Okay. So what is coming in to... That is the Latios! That is not the thing I wanted to come in and eat this knockoff! And he was thinking Expert Belt as well. Alrighty then. Noted. Uh, this is the part where not having... Warforged kind of sucks. That is fine, though. I'm gonna go into Arctic. Because I can take a psychic hit from this thing because of AV. Expert Belt, I don't think this thing has anything that immediately threatens Arctic, even if I was an AV. So I guess we'll recover. Okay. That tells me you might be a Calm Mindset. Which... I can take a hit from you, so I'm gonna go for Ice Cold Crash. As he goes for Grass Knot. Which does a ton, but 
This Icicle Crash should get rid of Latios, and I will take that. Okay, so that's a potential problem from Latios off the table. Whimsicott is frozen. Gren is still a potential problem, and I would not be surprised if that thing comes in right now seeking a free kill. If it is Battle Bond. That would be kind of a problem. Oh, that, that scissor, letting, losing scissor turn one has definitely set me back quite a bit. That is a Greninja. The way he brought this thing in screams. The way he brought this thing in just screams. Battle Bond. So I've got two options here. If Gren doesn't have Ice Beam, it's not an issue. It's actually not an issue for Chestnut. I feel like Wrath is the safer play, though. Just in case. So we will see what he wants to do. If he wants to just go for a water move. He goes for Water Shuriken, which is perfectly fine. With He's Protean. Okay, that is good to know. So I'm able to eat that Water Shuriken very easily. I can pretty much heal all of that off with these leftovers. And... I'm kind of tempted. I think I can Dragon Dance in this thing's face. I don't see how Greninja... Okay. Well, I didn't see Life Orb, so if, if he is choiced... Or potentially Expert Bell, maybe? Yeah, the, I saw no Life Orb. If he's Choice, he's locked in a Water Shuriken. If he's Expert Bell, a Grass Knot does not kill me. So, I lose nothing by Dragon Dancing here. And having Wrath potentially start turning the tide of this game, as is Gyarados' MO, pretty much. He's gonna withdraw, which is perfectly fine with me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and boost on up as he goes into the Frozen Whimsicott. The possibility does exist that he unthaws and goes Encore. That is very much a viable possibility here. And I think that might be what he's banking on. I'm going to go for Ice Fang because it definitely kills this thing. And he does not get it. I, I still can't believe Ice Fang froze. As this thing actually lives. Okay, he's this is a bulkier Whimsicott set. I, I'm sorry, I gotta double check this while I Ice Fang again because I have no reason not to. What is Ice Fang's chance of freezing? 10%. That is a 10% chance to freeze that I got on that Whimsicott. Oh, if I wasn't feeling bad enough already about that, and the fact that Wrath may very well be about to snowball. Oof. This was supposed to be Chimeco Showcase. Well, Gren is back in now. I am definitely out of... Well, if he's Protean... Yeah, if he's Specs, I'm still out of range of a Grass Knot. And I'm EV to outrun this thing. The temptation to Earth, the, the temptation to Dragon Dance is there, on the off chance he's a scarf set. Because I think a scarf grass knot with Protean actually two shots.
And then again, I don't, I don't even have plus two out, out on a Scarf set, so... We're just gonna go for the Earthquake. Okay, so I do outrun him. So he's not Scarf, that confirms that. As he just goes straight for the Hydro Pump. Which is fair. Wrath does take that. And... Well, I guess you, you, had, to, you had to know this was coming. Again, was not the plan, because I had hoped this would be Chimeco Showcase, but... Gyarados is just determined to steal the show at this point this season. It is making the UNPL uh, admin team start to question if this thing should be Terra Ban next season. I I hate that this is how this keeps going, but... I think with my team composition, it is just so easy for Gyarados to get in and just set up and sweep, because I've got so many other possible threats. So, I am at plus three now. I would not be surprised if he go- if he pulls, uh... He's gonna go Iron Hands. Which... Regardless of what this thing is, I'm pretty sure it doesn't take an Earth. Well, it might actually. Uh, the the plan was to the plan was to Terra was for Fortune to be my Terra Star this this week, but I'm realizing now that if I Terrastalize Wrath, I'm pretty sure I win this game right here and now. So. This was not the initial plan, but we will do it anyway. Because I can't deny the fact that Terra Ground Gyarados pretty much... I think kind of cleans up from here. Again, was not the plan, but here we are. Ap there is yeah, there should be no way you live that. Oh, dear. I... I feel bad. I, I legitimately feel bad that this keeps happening. That Gyarados just... keeps doing this. I'm a plus four now, right? Yeah. I'm just gonna waterfall you because I have no reason. I mean, I don't have to keep going for earthquakes here. This is a thing that is still happening. Oh dear. Oy vey, Gyarados, why do you keep doing this? Your mold breaker. Interesting. I don't know if that was intentional or not. I'm, I mean, I'm gonna go for waterfall regardless. I know you don't outspeed me. I. I have no words. GG Incog. I will say that even though I think we can both agree that was not really a GG. I... I honestly don't know how Gyarados keeps doing this. Literally. It doesn't... Even when I don't plan on Gyarados being my win con, it comes in, dragon dances, and steals the spotlight. I didn't even think I'd be able to pull that off this time to be 100% transparent. Not with Whimsicott around, but apparently Gyarados decided, no, I'm gonna get this 10% Ice Fang chance, Ice Fang, that this 10% Ice Fang freeze, and that is just going to ruin the day, I guess. I. This was supposed to be Chimeko's chance to shine. It finally came to a game. I was so excited to use it. And then, once again, just like 
kind of, I mean, at least last week when I did that with Chestnut, it, Willow got to do something. It got a kill. Uh, I, compl I honestly do not have any wards for how, how this keeps happening. This should not be, this should not keep happening. Gyarados just, this is just absurd at this point. Especially after I basically threw Scissor away on turn one. I shouldn't have been able to turn this around just like that. I guess that's a testament to Gyarados' power, though. <laughs> Regardless, GG again to Incog. I sincerely apologize that Gyarados has once again claimed another victim. I honestly don't know how this keeps happening. I hope you guys still enjoyed watching this battle regardless, though. Thank you so very much for watching. I have been Ruffy. And I will see you guys next time. Maybe with a little less Gyarados destruction. Fingers crossed. Or maybe I could just keep going with it and just lean into MVP. I don't know. Even still, I hope you guys have a great day. Take care.